Um, so we talked briefly <clears throat> about a nightmare on Elm Street, and uh, and I believe the last stream, and uh, I got to thinking. I was thinking about something because we were talking about Robert England. We were talking about you know yes. the potential of it uh, of another film. Loving to see Robert England. How the remake has been absolutely terrible. <laughs> Lethal Spirit Bomb, uh, and then and it just. Everything as a package, and like, why haven't they made a film? Because right now would be the perfect time to make a new nightmare film, right? You got all these classics returning. Uh, on mm. Friday the Thirteenth. It's understandable why nothing's came out yet because the lawsuit stuff. Like that. But Nightmare on Elm Street has had nothing other than they just haven't made a movie. And so mm. I was thinking, and of course, I want your opinions. And we'll start with Jake and just go around. Is uh, what if the reason they haven't made a new nightmare film? Or, or they're struggling with the new Nightmare film, is because Nightmare on Elm Street is Robert England. Like, because if you really think about it, like, Jason, uh, even Scream, like, Michael Myers, all that stuff, like, yes, it's that image, but there's not, there, it's not the character itself. You know, it's it, like, where well, Robert England is Freddy, the jokes, the mannerisms, the, the everything, where, where, you know, most of these other things where Scream is just anybody under the ghost face mask and Roger L. Jackson voice. Uh, same thing with, uh, you know, Michael or Jason is that they're just somebody in a mask that don't say anything. And so you can have anybody be that person. But when it comes to Nightmare on Elm Street with Freddy Krueger, that's it. Like, you know, and Freddy Krueger is like when you think of Nightmare on Elm Street, you don't think of anything. Though. You think of Freddy making his jokes like welcome to primetime, bitch, like, you know, all that stuff. Like, And so, yeah, that's that's kind of what I was thinking, too. And I thought that this would be a good point of discussion uh, for all of us. Uh, so, Jake, what do you think? What are your thoughts? I what I pretty much agree. I mean, I think that a lot of people feel that way about the franchise now because of how the 2010 movie performed and just how it was. You, we we hear a lot of like you hear this a lot about how the thousands and the late uh, the early 2010s. I mean, have a lot of remakes that people didn't necessarily love. But the one that I the specifically the one that I feel like the most people talk about is the Nightmare on Elm Street 2010 man because that one is just panned widely across the board pretty much i'm sure there are some people that dig it but it's just not mm -hmm. it's not the kind of freddy krueger we wanted and the entire third act every single line of dialogue that comes out of new freddy's mouth is something rehashed from the old movies which there's a variety of problems in that film but that's one of the biggest ones for me i would like to see a requel happen at some point for this franchise i feel like it's definitely something that's possible and a franchise where you can kind of rewrite the story and do something where it's just a sequel based off of just the first one because the, the sequels get so convoluted with the story there's no one way to beat freddy it kind of changes every single movie so there's a lot of inconsistencies between the sequels if you did a cons uh, just a sequel to the original one bring back Heather, Heather Langenkamp as Nancy, I think that, yeah, like, hell yeah, I'm all about it. You just got to find someone to play Freddy who, like, because I, I feel like Robert England, he's getting up there. He, he's, he's older now. He might not be interested in playing the role anymore. He might be rich. He might be done with it. But he is coming back for this new season of Stranger Things. So he's still working, and he's still active. So if now would be the time to do it with Robert England if they're going to do it. Otherwise, you're gonna have to start looking for a younger actor or someone who would fit the role, or maybe an who, older actor. Who comes? To, who comes to mind for you? That's another added, add for me to this question. This, if they decide to go a requel, they're gonna need someone who's a little older, probably. But if they were to do like another remake and you get a younger guy, dude, Glenn Howerton from Always Sunny in Philadelphia, I feel like is the perfect choice, which I, I've said this before on different videos and stuff. But the man was born to play a slasher and especially one that like it throws out some quips and some silly like lines of dialogue like that, because that's that's Freddy Krueger. They tried to in the first two acts of the Nightmare on Elm Street remake, they try to make him this serious dark slasher, but something that's like so missing and you can't do Freddy without it is his quips and his jokes. It's it's great. I mean, it's it's a part of the character. You have to do that. You have to have those mannerisms down. Robert England does it the best and it's going to be hard to find someone else to play the character. But I think Glenn Howerton could do it, theoretically. So, I, I don't know. I'll, I'll pass the torch on to Craven now, but I, that's, I just have some strong feelings about a new Nightmare film. I, I would love to see that happen at some point obviously you would need an older actor though if you're gonna go the requel route mm -hmm. yeah i agree i think uh, i'm gonna again be a little repetitive but i still feel strongly about this i think robert england 
God, come on, he can do he can do another Freddy. He can be Freddy again. I'm not buying. He's too old. And, you know, as some people out there try to say, I don't buy it. I don't buy that. You know, if Jamie Lee is freaking sixty some odd something, and she's still gonna be coming back, and she's been back. I mean, come on, you can do it. Now, you know, I granted the makeup and all, but still, I think Fate made a good point that what's so different from Freddy? I mean, there's a lot of things different, but as far as the the look from a Michael and a Jason, a ghost face is that there is no mask. His face is the mask. His face. He's got right. makeup, but there's not a mask covering up his face. And he's, that Robert England, that, that, if you have someone else that doesn't look like Robert England, it's really going to bug us legacy. I mean, at least maybe I speak for myself. It'll, it will bug me to a, a great deal. Because especially, it's not like Robert England has passed away or he's 75 80 he's 74. Old. He's 74. I just looked it up. Seriously? Is he yeah, really? He's, 70, he's 74 years old. Wow. I literally he is 74. Up. I didn't realize yeah. that. Mm. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, because I was like, how old is he? And maybe he is a little bit too old. Up. Maybe he's a little bit too old. I'll get, well, here's the thing, though. Stunt doubles are everything in Hollywood, right? Yeah. So you can have him for the shots. You need. It could be done. I'm convinced. You can, you can have him for all the shots where he's not going to have to be running around, uh, you know, all over the place. That's going to be stuff people anyway. So as long as he can hold down his other parts, his lines, all that other stuff, I think you can make it work. And I still say James Wan is the guy. That's who I want directing it. I'm going to stick with that. I'm not going to change it. I, I, I think Great he's choice. visionary. What's that? Great choice. Great choice. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I think I he's just a visionary. He, he he can bring that dream world to life. So I, that's my that's my pick for a writer, man. I'm, I mean, there's so many good writers. I, I won't try to. I'm, I'm not going to try to guess. But my biggest thing is is who brings it to life. That's what matters to me the most. Good story, and then who brings it to life. And James Wan, I think, could do it. If we can't have Robert England, all right, you know, call me a homer. I don't care, but. Matthew Lillard is Freddy Krueger. Listen, man, if he embodies that person, he's a naturally, he's kind of like that personality anyway. Yes. Yeah. That, he's kind of like that not personality. Matthew Lillard. I'm, well, you know, I'm just saying that Matthew Lillard. <laughs> well, Matthew Lillard, he, he naturally is kind of like Freddy Krueger in terms of like, he's, you know, he's always kind of, he's got that, that humor to him. He's got that personality. I can see it working. I mean, there's a lot of other actors I know that I, you know, I can't think of one right now because he's just on my brain. But I, there are some other guys I know that we could do a good job. But I, I just I just say bring in England, bring in a great stunt guy, make it work. That's what I would do. But anyway, if we can't have him, then... What are you gonna do? I'll give them a fair yeah. chance. All right, I'll give it, I'll, I, whoever it is. If they if they ever do this, I'll give the guy a chance. Whoever it is, and I'll go with an open mind and say, all right, I need the story to win me over. And and, I, and again, he'll never be Robert England. It's one of those things where it's like Sam's never gonna be Sydney. Right. Tara's never gonna be Sydney. Yeah. It's just just not happening. You know, they're not gonna. But I, I can't expect that from them. But I, I just want it to be done well, man. Just like I said with Alien. Because how many bad movies can we remakes do we need to see? I mean, come on, man. I mean, starting with uh, Nightmare 2. I mean, for, for goodness sakes, Nightmare 2, you got a possessed bird flying around that blows up. So <laughs> I'm like, are you kidding me right now? And this is, this is what happens when you, take, when, you, when you take Wes Craven out of the movie, you have a blown up bird flying around in the house. And I'm like, we have gone from the top of the mountains to the pits of hell in one movie. In just one movie. So, please, people, whoever, if we're going to do oh, this, Jesus. don't, don't right. take us back down. That's all I'm going to say. Night. Night. Right. Go ahead, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save you from this Freddy's Revenge rant. That you, please. You're ready to go on. Somebody please. stop me. Please. Go ahead. <laughs> Robert, Robert England is, is, a, is a treasure. So, I would absolutely love to see him do one more. It, it would be it would be amazing, and I think it'd be great as a send off. The great thing about Robert, or the great thing about Freddie, is that if you do the story right, he doesn't have to like do a lot physically himself. You know, especially if they have mm -hmm. good practical effects, a great vision. And I agree, James Wan could bring that easily. Easily, and James Wan knows his horror movies. He knows the history of horror movies, so so he would definitely do a heck of a job. But 
That being said, it is like a gift and a curse, kind of like what you were saying, Fate. You know, if Robert England isn't doing Freddy Krueger, who could step into those shoes? Now, like you were saying, um, Stephen, Matthew Lillard, yeah, I could, I could see some possibilities with that. That would be very, very interesting because you have to have someone that can have that type of intense intensity but also being able to do the one-liners and still be creepy and there's a little bit of humor it's all rolled up into one and he's obviously shown he can do that so that would be interesting but i'll tell you what guys if they're gonna get robert to do it they gotta start moving pretty quick because i did not yeah. know he was 74 i didn't you know either. that shocked me yeah i, 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 I did yeah, not know. 74 yeah, yeah. Wow. so i'm hoping I'm hoping it does move forward. I think they really need to, to, to correct the ship, right the ship from what happened with the remake. And really, an, a, a Nightmare on Elm Street is such a great concept. Freddy Krueger is such a great concept. He'll always be iconic. And I think it'd be great to get at least, you know, one more good entry, you know. And hopefully it's with Robert. But if not... We'll have to see. It's, it's it's big shoes to fill. It truly, truly is. That's not to say that it could never happen because, you know, people thought the same thing with, you know, Sean Connery as James Bond or or, or Christopher Reeve as Superman or who, you know, you always see these type of Bella Lugosi as Dracula. And the next thing you know, it took a while, but then you have Christopher Lee. And then people said, no, no one can do it better than Christopher Lee. Well, you know, so at some point there will be someone who can do a great job. You know, it's just difficult to think about it right now because we're still especially yeah. us legacy fans we're still big robert fans so anyways yep that's my little rant yeah it's true so i uh no I, I i agree with the points and i'm curious to see what's going to develop what's going to happen um you know because because it is a it, because freddie's just he is robert england and that and that's my concern and mm -hmm. to kind of quick follow up because uh, I think this is this is interesting as well. Um, is uh, do you guys do you guys think that it has the potential to just die, like the franchise itself as a whole? Do you think that do you think that like say they do one more film without Robert England and it's terrible again? I mean, it's not it's not. I, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that another shit film could completely kill the franchise at least for some foreseeable time i mean obviously you know 20 years from now they could probably revive it and most people wouldn't even know you know they because because right. at that point you're so far removed from our robert england it, most, newer generations and audiences this will be new to them but we're still close enough to where we know robert england and even newer generations and stuff know that so jake do you think it's possible that that nightmare could just die as a franchise Ooh, that's a hot take, man. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't think that's one of those. It's like one of the big four, right? That's like, um, yeah. yeah, like in metal yeah. music, there's like Metallica, Megadeth, Anthrax, Slayer. This is that for horror movies. This oh, is absolutely. one of those for horror movies. I don't think you can just kill a franchise like this, personally. I, I mean, I don't think you, so either. I say that, and then the franchise has also been dormant since 2010. But I, I feel like people want a new nightmare film. Eventually, it's going to happen one way or another, with Robert England or not. It, I feel like it's got it's bound to happen, just like the Friday the Thirteenth franchise. Just because all these lawsuits are going on, it's it's still going to happen though eventually. And people yeah. are forever going to want more of these movies. Even the newer generation, man. Like I have not been an adult ever where we got a new Fr new Jason film or a new Freddy Freddy movie. So I think it can. I think it can happen. I think it's possible. The younger generation loves those old films. They're fun movies. The Freddy movies are awesome. That first Nightmare on Elm Street is a classic, and it's. Awesome. But everything about it is so good. It's a yeah. ten out of ten movie. I, I think for sure that another one will come out. Could has did the two thousand ten movie kind of kill the franchise a little bit? Yeah, sure. You can make that argument. But I feel like it's because they didn't take the time and effort that Wes Craven put into that original movie. They didn't put that into this one. They didn't even use any of his considerations or ideas for that movie. They pretty much just kind of gave him the finger, which is insane. And you see that commented on a little bit in like movies like Scream 4. Wes Craven was not super happy with that movie or like the fact that they didn't even want his advice for the film. So that uh, that's the biggest problem with that film. Moving forward... I think you got to look back at that movie about what made it so good. That combination of scary and silly ideas put together. The great music. The eight. I mean, that super 80s score is another thing that makes it so good. You, you bring aspects like that back while modernizing it. I feel like you could have another great Nightmare on Elm Street film on your hands. Gentlemen, I have to get moving. But 
<laughs> Continuous conversation. This is a really good one. So, I peace out, everyone. Have a nice night. And All right, uh, see you tomorrow night. I yeah, I'll, I'll see you tomorrow night. Very excited for that yeah. stream. Make sure to talk about that and promote it. Absolutely. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Peace All right, out, nice. everybody. Yes. See you, man. Bye. See you. So, Craven, <laughs> what are your thoughts? Do you think that the uh, that the franchise could could potentially be dead? Um, yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, you have to be really careful, man, because it's been 11 years, 12 years, basically now, this is be 12 years, mm -hmm. Yep. and, I mean, look how long it took to get a Scream 5, I mean, we had Scream mm -hmm. 4 in 2011, and that right. wasn't, that was not a dumpster fire, I mean, that was a Wes Craven movie, that was a good film, you right. know, my, my second favorite ghost face after Billy and Stu, but it still, even that took all this time. You know, to get made at 11 mm -hmm. years later. So, the key is, like you say, man, if if they come back and it is a horror, it's, it is a wretched nightmare. No pun intended. Like like uh, the last one, the remake. Mm -hmm. Then it'll it'll be 10 years again. It'll be another 10 years before someone says we're going to spend 30 million dollars or 25 million dollars to, to to take a chance again on this thing. Mm -hmm. But I think it has to at least do. You know, at least it's got to be profitable, number one, of course. And then it's going to have to at least get some of the fans back. Because I think, like, fans, like, I'll speak for just me, like myself. I have, I, I don't want nothing to do with that movie. I, I'll never mm -hmm. watch that movie. I have no desire to ever watch it again. And I know that, and I know that there's some that are sure that love it. And great. I mean, I'm glad you do. I'm not one of those. And I know a lot of the people that share this sentiment I have. And as legacy fans of, and, of, and of Craven fans, man, we take that stuff take it really seriously man when you you know and so you're going to come back and especially with west being alive all these hey, see ya take care hey, um west being alive and when west was killing it in, around that time frame and he just did yeah he my soul to take once he wrote and directed in 2010 and then you know of course scream is working on screen for 2011 so it's not like west was off just bird watching all the time he was mm -hmm. still working and you know and and I don't mean that as a put down. I mean, he loved to bird watch. That was like one of his big, big hobbies. So, you know, that's what he would do when he wasn't making movies and writing. But anyway, so my point is the fact that, I mean, just imagine if Wes had come in. If they said, man, we're, we're, we, want, we want to come back with a vengeance and, and we get Wes Craven back on Nightmare. Could you imagine what that, that remake would have been like? Just, I mean, of course, the imagination is the limit, right? The sky's the limit. But... Yeah, I think it's dangerous territory, man. They they better be careful, and that's why I keep saying James Wan. You got to swing big. You can't you can't just bring in some unknown. Not that there's not talented unknowns, but some, this is a huge. There's a lot of writing on this, kind of like Scream Five. Mm -hmm. There was a ton yeah. of writing on that. You're not, you're not talking about a prove it film. You're talking about a mega yes. franchise. Yeah, bingo. Mm -hmm. This is exactly right, and that's how it's, that's the stakes are really high. So in my opinion, yeah, if you're gonna do it. You better get Juan or someone of his caliber, and you better get Robert England back. Because if Robert England's back, it's going to bring us legacy of folks back into it big time. And anyway, that's my thoughts on it, man. Yeah, it's it's either go big or go home, which is a cliche, but I think it fits. Well, I agree. I mean, I totally agree with that. I, I think if you get Robert involved with it, if you get him back, and um, that that alone will definitely bring a lot of positive um vibes to it especially for legacy fans um yeah. but again you've got to get the, the script has to be tight man you know and if you have someone like james wan you know all the 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 directing and, and the filming aspect of it is going to be great so that's that's fine but the story has to be solid it has to be a really good story and i think the atmosphere when you think about the original nightmare on elm street the atmosphere you know, is what was what was the biggest thing. I mean, Freddie was great in it. Robert was great in it. But that atmosphere and and the way that he was in the movie that's what for me, anyways. That's what makes it stand out, even against the other the other sequels. And and I love Dream Warriors, you know. Me too. But but the original just had that atmosphere, that creepy atmosphere. Now, like you were saying, Fade, if they did another one and it wasn't good, you know, could that destroy the franchise? I mean, anything's possible, but. I don't know, man. I mean, kind of like what Jake was saying, this is one of the big three. So I just don't see, I, 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 it would be hard to believe that it would destroy it, you know, for good. 
you know, I mean, again, like you said, maybe we'll have a long break or something like that. But there'll be a time when someone's like, yeah, you know, we got to bring Freddy Krueger back because he's just so big. He's so iconic, you know, and, and I just don't see it dying even with one more bad one. Um, but anything's so comes, possible. So it comes down to either do we get a second one if they make a new one? Do we get another one in 10 years or do we get one in two years? Right, that would be the, right. Depending, depending on, on the, the performance, yeah, depending on the quality, yeah. Right, yeah, my, that's a good my, point. My to to kind of to kind of push back and and speak on the other side is that like I mean, all good things come to an end at some point. You know, we've seen some iconic things that people never thought. Not even just in the horse, not even just in the movie space. Period, but just the world in general, that you're just like this thing's going to be around forever, and eventually it just fades out because. This isn't like any of the other horror franchises. Like, like I said earlier, like Nightmare, uh, sorry, uh, Friday, um, you know, Halloween, things like that. You could do those, even Scream. You could do those movies forever because it's not a face of a person and a, and a character. You know, the 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 way that that character is portrayed, and not just that, but yes, it is the sort of big three of horror, right? It's the thing that in many ways inspired, created, and and paved the way for horror movies today. Mm-hmm. But in 20 years, people like us are going to be older. We're not really going to care as much. We haven't gotten a, a nightmare film in, you know, say 15 years, so no one's really talking about it. you got newer generations that are coming in into horror, all that stuff, like... You could. I just think it's. It's. I'm not saying it will happen or that it's even likely. But I'm saying like I don't think it's impossible to think that in you know 30 years from now, Nightmare on Elm Street is something that we're all talking here on the collective about. Going, remember when we had this great? Like you know, <laughs> we're just all, all old and gray talking, talking about the, the old days. Like you know, and mm-hmm. times have changed. You know, and I, I just I don't I don't think it's. I, I just, I don't, unless they, they reestablish it and mm-hmm. relatively soon, because I mean, it's been a while. I mean, the 2010 thing, the problem was that wasn't good enough. Even, 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 even though we all agree that we hated it, if it was at least a half decent film that like maybe, uh, like maybe the legacy people, like the people that grew up with Freddie, maybe, maybe we hated it. But, like, general audiences enjoyed it, you know, newer generations enjoyed it, then I think we'd be in a completely different spot. The problem was the legacy people hated it, which are the ones that are going to go and see anything you do. And then on top of that, the general audience hated it. And the entry point people that were, this was their introduction in A Nightmare on Elm Street, hated it. And so you, you just ran, you just essentially just shot yourself in the foot of ever really projecting. So if you remove that 2010 film and all that hype, we haven't gotten a film in what, what, 30 years? Yeah, it's been a long yeah, time. Since, since that first, yeah. So, I mean, we're already another well, generation removed. New Nightmare, right? That was 94. Yeah, yeah 94. Yeah, well, so, yeah. Nightmare. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's been some time. Uh, you know, so 26 years, 27 years, whatever. So, I mean, it's been a while. And, you know, you haven't had anything else in between that time that's going to create a buzz and create a hype that would, you know, that okay, with that with the 10-year hiatus, it's still successful. I mean, we saw that with Scream. But you had the yeah. trilogy, you had the film in the middle, it didn't do great, uh, but people enjoyed it. Like, you know, some legacy people didn't like it, but, but general people did seem to like it. And then, so that you had enough buzz for when you made a new film, 10 years later, there was still interest. Where now it's like I don't know. It's just it's a it's a tricky thing. And um, I saw Blucka left a comment that's like, "Do you think that uh, it'll affect because uh, because we know the story, something along those lines?" I don't think oh, so yeah. because mm-hmm. because we know. I mean, think about it. We know Michael's story. We yeah. know you know we, we know the the Leatherface story. We know Jeez. the Scream story. You know, yeah, right. like the motives might slightly change, but we, we've seen all the motives. We know uh, generally what's going to happen. Like we know, mm-hmm. like yeah, it's a who done it mystery, but we all like if you've watched a Scream film, you know what's going to happen. You're going to have this little who done it aspect. You're going to have everyone has a red hair, and then you get to the end, and there's going to be two killers. Like that's just that's just the formula for five straight films. You know, yeah. so. I don't think I don't think knowing is the problem because also 
the legacy, the legacy, you know, the generations before, they don't care. They just want to see a good film. And the newer generations, they don't likely know the story, period. So they're getting an entry point for that story. And we're also seeing a lot of these franchises remove that backstory and just take it right. as the audience already knows. So, and I, I could see that happening with, with the Nightmare film. Like, if they did make a new Nightmare film, they just say, you know, oh, well, we, you know, the, the audience already knows, so let's just move forward. But, I don't know. I, I yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, cool. I think the other thing, too, about the Nightmare movies is that, I mean, anytime you, you do a sequel, you're already, you know, kind of up against the gun because you know the story or you know the killer or you, you kind of know what to expect. Now, of course, if you have a good filmmaker, you know, a good director or whatever, they try to find ways to pave new ground, you know, within the mythology that's that's been started up, unless you change the mythology. And we've seen that type of thing happen with sequels before, and it didn't really work out well. <laughs> Talking to you, Jason goes to hell, <laughs> you know. Oh. But, but, um, but, you know, I think even though we know Freddy Krueger, we know the backstory and so forth, there can still be some, some interesting things that they could do with a sequel, even if they bring Robert back. You know, and I would, again, I'd love to see Robert come back, but I think they still could do some really interesting things with Freddy Krueger if you have, again, you've got to have a good story. I think that, yeah. other than Robert, I think the story it might be the most important thing, you know, because if the story sucks, then no one's going to get on board, and you've got to figure out how are you, how is this going to fit in the universe of the films, of the mythology, you know? Is it going to take the route of a lot of newer legacy franchises nowadays where you, you just, uh, you're a sequel to the original or a sequel to one of the movies in there? Or, or does everything, has everything that's happened in these movies, does it still count? You know, so I think th those are some of the interesting questions to me, you know? But again, if they come up with a good story uh, for the movie, for the sequel then I think that's going to make a big difference. That's almost, Great. to me, almost just as important as getting Robert back. You know, because if they get Robert England back, yes, you know, I want to see him. You know, even if the movie sucked, I'd still be glad to see him if that would be his final time portraying Freddy. But you, you got to have a good story. That's that's the only way it's going to work, you know. I mean, I think you're 100% right. 1,000% right. A fictional number, 1,000%. I really do, because honestly, the things I think that we're all talking about is kind of like what we have left here that Jake has gone. It's it's a three-part pie. And I think that you have directors, you've got the writing, and you've got Robert. Just kind of like the three we're here. You take one of those out, it might be decent. It may be horrible. It's hard to say what you know. But if you put all three together, then you've got potential, the best potential you have to catch fire. That's right. I mean, because you're right. You can have James Wan and Robert England. I mean, you're ready to go. And you got some horrific, terrible writing, terrible dialogue, just bad story. And even them, they might be able to salvage it to a degree, but just in their performance and their and their direction and the cinematography. But man, you're right. You know, give us a. You, you need to have equal part story, equal part direction, equal part. Robert, I was gonna say Robert. He needs to be he needs to be there. And like I mentioned earlier, even if it's just for the first one, just to get the legacy fans back, give us credibility back to this franchise since Wes Craven's '94 uh, New Nightmare, mm -hmm. and then build it from there. Worry about the future once you have a future to worry about. Right now, they don't even have that. Right, They've got nothing. And I love that, Carrie. That's why I was, I was chuckling a little bit earlier tonight when you were talking. Not when I what you said. I was reading Carrie's comment. It just made me laugh. Oh, gosh. <laughs> like, but that's, that's kind of like what I'm talking about, though. It's like, you know, because we're all talking about we, we need Robert England back. We want to see Robert England back and all that stuff. Like, but that's the problem. It's like he's not, like if he was in his 40s or 50s, like yes. But the problem is he's 74. Yeah. And yeah. so, like, and yes, like even like I've seen in the comments, people are like he doesn't really need to be physical, which is true. I don't, right. Even somebody mentioned the voiceover, which mm -hmm. would be fine, all those things. But it's it's not just the voice, it's everything about him. Like, yeah, it's the way he stands. Yeah, I the, way the, way stands, the way he looks. He physicalized his, Freddy yeah, so his much. Physique. You know, everything. The, the glove and everything. And that's what I'm talking about, the franchise being dead. Like, you know, I, I, like, heaven forbid, knock on wood, you know, if Robert England wasn't here tomorrow and they and they wanted to make a new, you know, uh, nightmare movie, like, 
you know, it's like Graven, like you're saying, like with the, the bringing the legacy people back. I was like, even for the first one, we got to move on regardless, like because just his age and everything. So that's the problem is that like, yeah. like we all want, we all kind of say the only way this is really going to work is if Robert comes back. <sighs> Yeah. It's just like I just it, like, I don't see that happening at this point, yeah. and so that's what I'm talking about. I really think it's very likely this franchise could die because wow. they centered the entire franchise around Robert England. Mm. It's not some monster that you know is whatever. I mean, you know, I mean Robert England as Freddie was doing guest appearances on talk shows and stuff. Yep. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. you're yeah. talking. I mean, he wasn't just some guy in a some monster actor in a movie. In Max, he literally. Yeah embodied Freddy Krueger. He was doing press junkets and all kinds of stuff. He would just surprise... Well, they, well, they, they, they realized how important Robert was exactly. right in part two, because in part two, they originally had someone else as Freddy Krueger. That scene as where, he, where, where he goes into the shower to, to, uh, to get Jesse, that's someone else dressed up as Freddy. And yes. you can tell, too, because he's moving so robotic and he looks, you know, a lot more... Uh, he looks bigger than Robert, you know what I'm saying? And as soon as they saw that, they were like, okay, let's get Robert back. Because, you know, Robert, you know, and his agent, they wanted a little bit more money and so forth. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, the head of New Line, Bob, Bob Shea, was like, mm-hmm. well, we don't need Robert. We can get yeah. anyone in the Freddy Krueger makeup. And then after they saw yeah. what was going on, they were like, okay, we got to get Robert. Because, again, Robert brought, you know, and Robert even talked about it. He talked about how the glove was a little bit heavy, so he thought of it as like a gun, gun holster, so his hip would hang a little bit lower on that side, you know, and when he would bring the glove up to kill, he wouldn't just bring it up like that, he'd like, you know, he'd flick it, you know, and kind of, you know, all these little things that Robert brought to it, and that's why Freddy Krueger is so iconic, but again, Fate, like you're saying, if, if if the franchise continues into the future, Obviously, at some point, it, it would have to be without Robert, and that's that's the conundrum. That's like, exactly. wow, how do we... And it's the same thing we're seeing with a lot of these other legacy franchises. Like I said, Jamie Lee Curtis is the gift that keeps on giving to Halloween, and it's also the curse that keeps on cursing Halloween. Because can you do these stories without Laurie Strode? We're seeing that with Sydney and Scream. You know, when are they going to finally part ways are we going to let her be happy with mark and the kids or is she going to keep coming back to woodsboro or wherever to well, help the, yeah exactly she'll be happy and still keep coming back <laughs> <laughs> good point steven doesn't have but to be it, either or <laughs> yeah but i'm just saying it's like at some point what do we do with these 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 legacy characters um that are just so yeah. so cemented in these movies it's 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 t-